continuing our discussion uh, our modern atomic theory in recent years has a um, highly mathematical character and uh, the model basically is the structure of the atom uh, is uh, it uh, it is based on bohr rutherford theory so it consists of a large portion of unoccupied space around the nucleus uh, but it is populated by revolving electrons around a positively charged dense relatively stable nuclear mass called as nucleus which is composed of neutrons and positively charged protons. So, the atomic nuclei what do we know about them? The protons and neutrons together constitute what is known as the uh, atomic weight or weight of the element. Okay? So, the mass number is uh, atomic mass unit there is no specific uh, um, weight like that except uh, that we, we have weighed uh, approximately about 10 raise to minus uh, 24 grams or something. But the mass number is the whole number closest in magnitude to the actual weight in atomic mass units. So, everything is measured only in atomic mass units and uh, since neutron and proton have the same atomic mass, but there is a difference of charge proton has a positive charge and electron has a uh, neutron has no charge. So, if I take a neutron add an electron to this okay, I get a proton and if I take a proton remove an electron from that I get a neutron. So, this kind of equilibrium reaction can be happening in the most of the proton neutron systems. However, the equation what we have written here neutron plus electron goes into proton neuro proton minus electron going to neutron this equation represents an, a very very simplified case. And uh, the small masses of the electron and positron actually they forbid their functioning in such reactions. Okay. So, uh, in uh, 1913 Sir J. J. Thompson showed that the neon contains the neon is a gas. Okay? Uh, you must have seen neon lights all around you in all uh, shopping complexes etcetera. Very familiar uh, um, chemical around us. It contains atoms of mass numbers 20 and very small fraction of 22. So, work continued on this then they said that okay, a neon atom has got two types neon gas some atoms have an atomic mass unit of 20 and a very small portion of that is having mass of 22. That means, there are two types of neon having uh, different number of protons because chemically if they have to be diff if they have to be same the protons have to be same, but the mass uh, that means, if the protons and neutrons are equal uh, then the, there should not be any difference at all. So, if you determine the average weight of uh, neon you will end up somewhere between 20 and 22. You will neither get 20 nor 22 that means, there is a small amount of uh, neon contains elements having mass number 22. So, chemical reactions are same is not it. So, chemical properties of both the atoms are same. So, Soddy suggested another scientist called as Soddy, he suggested a term known as isotope. He said if the chemicals are same, if the chemical properties are same the only difference is in their physical characteristics. Okay. So, if the physical characteristics are different chemically they are same it is just like having uh, one person uh, uh, having twins both of them look alike, but they are different. So, um, they he suggested a term known as isotope for such elements which are having different mass numbers 
but same chemical properties. So, they occupy the same places in the periodic table because the uh, periodic table nowadays is based on the atomic number that is number of protons rather than the atomic mass. We will st study about it a little bit later. So, they are all chemically identical and differ only in physical properties which are dependent upon the mass. So, if there are atomic uh, if there are elements having different atomic mass if there are elements having different atomic mass some are more abundant some are less abundant and some are more stable and richer in isotopes some are less stable so the question arises whether such elements are stable or not okay uh, so the um, elements the fundamental principle is elements of uh, having elements having odd number of atoms and even number of atoms so elements of even atomic numbers are normally more abundant that means, 2, 4, 6, 8 like that uh, atoms uh, elements they are more abundant than odd numbers elements of odd numbers that is 1, 3, 5 like that and uh, except hydrogen and tritium, tritium is a an isotope of hydrogen having 2 neutrons and 1 proton hydrogen is 1 proton no neutron. So, except hydrogen and tritium neutrons and protons tend to be equal in all elements that is the bottom line. Okay. So, the if you take any element the number of protons and number of neutrons tend to be approximately equal. Generally neutron to proton ratios are around 1.2 Okay, it is not exactly 1.0, but around 1.2, but they never exceed more than 1.6. That means, the isotopes are never more than uh, uh, 50 percent in any uh, element. So, this is a point to be noted for uh, our general discussion, uh, because it may have some implication in the uh, spectroscopic uh, interpretation. So, uh, what he suggested sorry he suggested that uh, um, there are nuclei with even number of neutrons okay, and equal number of protons such nucleus are most abundant than those of odd numbers even number nucleus and uh, uh, protons and neutrons elements are more abundant than the odd number of neutrons. So, nuclei with even mass numbers are more stable than the nuclei of odd numbers. Okay. So, now I think you are able to understand co concentrate uh, understand that we are discussing only about the nucleus not the electrons. Okay. So, early mass spectrographic data of hydrogen people looked at it very easy uh, very consistently and its atomic weight was confirmed to be 1.00775 based on the assumption that ordinary oxygen is not an isotopic mixture but it has an atomic weight of 16 this is a reference value for us that means you want to compare the weight of any element you take oxygen as standard the average weight atomic weight is 16 provided oxygen does not have any isotopes. This value was acceptable and it became uh, if you take this value then the weight of one hydrogen atom uh, is approximately 1.00778 that means, now you imagine the 8 grams of oxygen 
uh, 1 gram of hydrogen will combine with 8 grams of oxygen and uh, the oxygen isotopes there are 3 1 with 16, 17 and 18 mass numbers they are already there. Therefore, two types of mass numbers are in use. One refers to the approximate average weight of 16.0000 whatever it is for reference okay. and the other uh, which is known as uh, um, for actual calculations the that takes into account the isotopes that average weight is 16.00447 okay. for theoretical for um, calculation of very high accuracy we take atomic weight of oxygen as 16.00447 and for normal routine work we take it as 16.0000 that is 5 decimals. The former is usually accepted for routine purposes and the physical values are used to describe the properties related to atomic nuclei. Okay. So, uh, nuclear stability again we have been discussing about it the presence of stable elements implies that neutrons and protons are held together by attractive forces we are discussing about nuclei, nucleus there are protons, there are neutrons and these are held together by attractive forces at the center of the atom. Okay. At the same time the coulombic forces, repulsive forces also must be present. Now, the I want you to understand the concept here we are talking about the nucleus, nucleus has got protons and neutrons, protons have positive charge, neutrons do not have any charge, but still they are all together. That means, the, uh, the fundamental law of physics is any substance which has a weight must exert some sort of a force that is known as <coughs> the attractive force anything that uh, weighs. So, the protons and neutrons must be attracted together to each other to remain together at the center of the nucleus. Okay. These are known as coulombic forces. So, the coulombic forces repulsive forces are there they also must be present coulombic forces can be attractive as well as repulsive. So, but still all around us we see that the nucleus nu is stable that means, the positive charge the sum total of these forces would be attractive forces because they stay together. So, the uh, repulsive forces generated by the mass of protons and neutrons are overtaken by the attractive forces between the at, uh, between the nucleus and protons that is how the protons and uh, neutrons stay together at the center of the atom. So, the energy changes between the protons and neutrons would be maximum energy exchanges when equal number of neutrons and protons exist. That means, the electrons and protons if they are equal in number the energy change between the two would be uh, equal and it will be more stable. Okay. So, for better stability of a nucleus the neutron to proton ratio should be unity. If they are equal it will be unity, if they are not equal it will not be unity, it would not be so stable as the one with equal number of protons and neutrons. However, since protons usually mutually repel each other protons also if you bring any two protons you know both positive you try to bring them together like forces repel each other. So, two positively charged protons also would repel each other right. So, uh, since protons mutually repel each other a tendency to repel each other also should exist in the nuclear force 
in the nucleus. So, for elements containing less protons and more neutrons, there would be a tendency towards equalization of protons and neutrons. You try to understand this concept. Okay. Uh, protons also repel each other, but if there are more protons, if there are uh, more protons and less neutrons, there is a tendency towards equalization and the other way also, if there are less protons and more neutrons, again there is a tendency. So, such uh, elements would be having some sort of a stability problem and they would like to move to stable uh, composition and that is how the radioactivity also is a very important phenomena, especially when high molecular high atomic weight molecules uh, at elements are there, they try to acquire stable nuclear mass having equal number of protons and neutrons. Okay. So, the atomic weight of the elements show remarkable constancy indicating that the isotopic composition remains constant on the earth. This is a very important fundamental rule that is atomic weights of the elements show a remarkable tendency for uh, isotopic composition, it should be constant all over the earth, whether it is in gaseous form or solid form or uh, liquid form either way. So, only oxygen shows higher abundance of heavier isotopes in the atmosphere than water. You know, as we all know that uh, water is a very important uh, concept in the environment, right. So, water is having hydrogen, uh, hydrogen oxygen and uh, deuterium oxygen, tritium oxygen. So, uh, any water that you have would be having all the three and then only the uh, oxygen also has a higher abundance of uh, isotopes. So, uh, where uh, oxygen shows higher abundance of heavier isotopes in the atmosphere than water, because ox water is less in quantity on the surface of the earth than oxygen. Okay. So, further variations in the atomic weights are normally noticed for heavy elements due to their radioactive origins. So, the uh, factor that affects the nuclear stability is basically the shear mass of the nucleus only. Okay. So, nuclei possessing excessive mass that is I just now mentioned that heavier elements. Okay. So, the heavier elements means what, what is the limit of heavy element? We say approximately 200, 209 to above that we call it as heavier elements and then they are spontaneously unstable and try to achieve nuclear stability by emitting alpha particles that is helium atoms okay, 2 H E 4 helium atoms with 2 atomic charge and 4 uh, mass atomic mass units. So, the elements heavier than 209 atomic weight keep on losing the helium, al al helium atoms that decreases their atomic weight by 4 amu and atomic number by 2, it reduces. That means, the product after losing alpha particle is lighter in weight by 4 units and lighter in uh, atomic number by 2 units. So, what are the, how does it happen? Such elements lose um, the new lose their atomic excess weight by various processes and such reactions are classified as capture reactions, particle particle reactions, fission reactions, spallation reactions and fusion reactions. Okay. So, all these reactions are in turn induced reactions which fall into 5 categories. One is 
the alpha induced reaction that means alpha helium particles and uh, you can they can be photon proton induced reactions and then they can be deuteron induced reactions and then neutrons that is gamma gamma rays induced reactions and neutron induced reactions. So, all these uh, these are the mechanisms through which a heavier element would keep on losing the excess weight the by losing the electrons and uh, by losing the neutrons and protons to achieve the nuclear stability. Uh, these are this kind of information is usually required for understanding of the atomic structure, but not for ICP what uh, for our course. So, we are not going into details of this, but suffice it to say that uh, there are uh, nuclear stability issues and isotopes and such reactions um, such elements having higher number of protons and neutrons tend to lose their excess weight by um, uh, by reaction with alpha um, that is uh, helium atoms, protons, neutrons, deuteron induced reactions and gamma ray induced reaction. There are, these are the different reactions uh, through which a heavier element tries to uh, tries to attain the nuclear stability. Now, what we have understood so far is that the atom as we understand today it contains protons, neutrons and electrons. There are other fundamental particles such as mesons and then uh, positrons, neutrinos, anti neutrinos and several other particles are there. They do not have a specific existence and uh, there are um, as far as we discussed about the stability of the nucleus uh, with respect to the electrons. What we generally conveyed so far in our discussion is that there are protons and neutrons in the nucleus and these are held together by coulombic forces. The sum total of the coulombic forces is positive that is why the they all stay together but there are uh, reactions, there are um, uh, forces which also repel each other. For example, two protons uh, will should repel each other and then uh, two neutrons should uh, repel each other because of the coulombic forces and uh, Van't Hoff's uh, um, equations. So, in um, now we are going back towards the electronic structure. Yeah. So, in 1903 Bohr proposed a radically different view of the atomic structure which we have already seen earlier by a, through a crude model and uh, but this time in uh, Bohr proposed a uh, structure for atoms based on the optical spectrum of hydrogen. What he did was the uh, spectrum of hydrogen shows different lines okay. and uh, I will show you in my next class. The uh, each line represents certain amount of transition of the electron from one energy level to the next energy level. Okay. What he did his greatest contribution is that the energy corresponding to each transition what he said is is based upon the exact quantity of energy that is not continuous that means, every transition must require specific quantity of specific amount of energy and this is known as quantized energy. I want you to understand that uh, the quantized energy system is proposed by Max Planck okay, that is based on the um, black body radiation and um, uh, we are not going into details of that except to understand that 
the every energy transition in any element requires a specific amount of energy and the next transition would not be a continuous increase in the energy, but another quantum of energy. That means, only when this exact quantity of energy is supplied to the system, the transition uh, takes place otherwise it will not. If you the uh, it is it goes by specific um, requirement of energy rather than continuous increase of energy. So, Bohr proposed that uh, the electron in a hydrogen atom always describes a fixed circular path that we have already seen around the nucleus. So, such orbits are known as, known as stationary states and it may be thought of various circles differing in radius this we have already seen. So, if the electrons are there moving around the nucleus electrons are moving around the nucleus the electrons would be having some sort of a an orbital angular momentum. So, the it is the movement of any electron going around the circle is governed by centripetal force and centrifugal force and uh, the that is how it is held in the position in the, around the nucleus otherwise it will either fall into the uh, nucleus or it will go away from the new, from the nucleus from its uh, center path and will be devoid of any electrons but it, it, it doesn't happen so the angular momentum of the stationary states was an integral multiple of h by 2 pi uh, that h is known as planck's constant this is how the uh, quantum mechanical relationships enter into the atomic structure so each stationary state state is defined by h by 2 pi uh, where h is known as planck's constant it amounts to the angular momentum the angular momentum is also given by mass into velocity into radius that is m v r it is a multiple of n into h by 2 pi. So, n cannot be a fraction according to the quantum mechanical rule this is the beauty n can be 1 it can be 2 it can be 3 it can be 5 it can be any number, but it cannot be 1.2 or 1.5 or 2.7 like that. So, n is an integer called as quantum number this as concept uh, Bohr included in the atomic structure. He also postulated that as long as the electron remained in a given orbit, it neither radiates energy nor absorbs energy. This is a very important concept again. Okay. So, what he said is the electron uh, goes round and round and round, but as long as it is stable in that as long as it retains it is re remaining in the orbit it does not lose energy nor does it gain energy. It is does not absorb energy it does not lose energy. So, when the electron moves from one point orbit to another that is from one level to another level it has to uh, it has to either absorb energy or it has to lose energy okay, or emit energy. So, the amount of energy that is um, keep me on. So, the amount of energy that is uh, retained in the either during absorption or emission must be equal to the quantum mechanical energy that is defined by m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi, where n would be 1, 2, 3 etcetera not the fraction. So, it depends it is dependent upon whether the electron moves from lower state to higher energy state that is absorption of energy and if it is uh, falling from higher energy level to lower energy it has to lose that much of extra energy. Okay. So, this is what it means 
the lower state from to higher state and vice versa it can lose energy or it can gain energy. So, this energy difference occurring during absorption or emission it manifests as radiation and the frequency of such radiation is the manifestation of a spectral line that you see in a hydrogen atom which could be related to the energy of the electron in each state that is a initial state and final state that I have designated here as E 1 and E 2. Okay. So, what he meant is that the line spectra of hydrogen atom is described by a number of series known as Ly Lyman series, Balmer series, Paschen series, Bracket series and Fund series. Okay. This uh, Balmer series is uh, this Palmer series is a spectrum of hydrogen that is in the visible region that is you can see the lines in a um, region where with our naked eye and uh, Lyman series are a series of lines in the hydrogen spectrum which occur in ultraviolet region and Paschen series occurs in IR and near IR bracket series still lower down the energy that we will see later and fund series is another uh, series where you can see that here it is n is equal to 1 and uh, n is equal to 2 and uh, n is equal to 3, 4, 4 5 etcetera and uh, the transition occurs from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4 like that for in Lyman series. Transition occurs from 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5 like that in the for the Balmer series, 3 to 4, 3 to 5, 3 to 6 like that you will end up with a number of uh, lines in a hydrogen spectrum and each line can be ascribed to one of these transitions. So, the origin of hydrogen spectrum is that it could explain the spectra of hydrogen and uh, uh, but it failed completely when applied to multiple electron systems if actually the uh, we, I have been describing this only for hydrogen atom. Okay. So, so, hydrogen atom has got only one proton and one electron you excite that electron to higher energy level according to Bohr's theory from one energy another energy the difference is, uh, uh, is fixed and constant. So, if the bottom line is uh, number 1 and next energy is 2, 3, 4 etcetera, there you will see number of lines corresponding to 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3, 1 is to 4, 1 is to 5 like that, that is Lyman series and st sli come to slightly higher energy level 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5 like that you will see Balmer series then Paschen series 3 to 4, 3 to 5, 3 to 6 etcetera. So, this Bohr theory could explain most of the lines for hydrogen atom, but not for higher elements that is helium, lithium, iron, cobalt and all they all become very complicated. You cannot really ascribe each uh, element because it is uh, almost impossible task to imagine all the uh, line spectra and assign it to specific energy level. So, this Bohr's theory could not explain the spectra of hydrogen, uh, it could explain the spectra of hydrogen because it is a simple system, but it failed completely when applied to multiple electron systems helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon and all those things. So, further it could not account for splitting of oxygen optical lines when spectroscopy uh, spectroscopes of high resolving power were employed. So, that is the crux of the problem. So, this is the pictorial representation, this is Lyman series, One, this is the 
from here to here this is the first uh, circular orbit ok. So, uh, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, uh, 4 to 1 like that it can be other way also 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4 like that this is all Lyman series and this is all Balmer series they all end up with 2 they do not go to 1. Uh, so, the all the transitions are from higher level to lower le energy level this is for emission and same thing is true with Paston series, bracket series and fund series ok. So, the uh, this is the origin of line spectrum etcetera and uh, spectroscopes of higher energy level what happens is any line in uh, higher resolution spectrum instead of showing one, 4 it should it would show 8 or 10 then we do not know how to interpret. So, the uh, Bohr's theory could not explain the extra lines that are that appear when spectroscopes of high resolving power were employed. So, that is where the failure of Bohr's orbit um, Bohr's theory and uh, uh, then the there was some slight improvement in the understanding of the atomic structure using uh, by Summerfield theory that we will see in the next class.